there is a red there you go. And it does record sound. Hello YouTube. Okay, so far YouTube has succeeded in getting a lot of mug shots of me. So I must smile and try to um try to woo YouTube into not taking mug shots of me. Anyhow, um so the topic today is who are the founders of modern day witchcraft? Modern day witchcraft, what do you mean, you might say? Well, you could see it from traditionalist or eclectic point of view. And um, for more information on that, you can see my other YouTube video, Eclectic versus Traditionalist. Um, I'll give you my take on it. Uh, modern day witchcraft was, I think, founded by many important 1800s authors. For example, I truly believe that Charles G. Leland, my fr favorite author for the most part, well, because I collect his uh, first printing books, but anyhow, I really think that he was one of the people who influenced witchcraft. Now, he was probably the first person, I would say, brought to the forefront who wrote about witchcraft from an academic standpoint, I think. Go ahead and correct me if I'm wrong, but he was born in, I think, 1824, died in 1903. Um, so if you have a source before that, or before his first book, fine. But his major book, one of his famous, famous books, uh, he had a lot of books, but one of his famous books was um, Aradia, Gospel of the Witches. And this is a big big uh, debated book by the Italian witchcraft, by the Stregaria. And you might say, oh no, you're saying that wrong. Fine. I don't really pay attention to pronunciation that much. But anyhow, um, it was a very important book because it brought to the forefront Italian witchcraft. And some people say, well, yeah, some of it's true, some of it's not. Some people really like it. Some people really hate it. No matter if you like it or hate it, though, one of the obvious facts is that Charles Leland brought to the forefront witchcraft as a practice, as a belief system, as something that was really still done. And he merged it with historical standpoint. So that was really awesome, especially for an academic author of, like he was at his time. Another another um, person or a few other people that I'd like to acknowledge, well, of course, uh, Gregory, um, Samuel Gregory Mathers or whatever. Well, you might debate, mm, we're not really going there because he was more into ceremonial magic and that might not be witchcraft or something like that. But I don't know. I would debate that point with you because how do we really know who is calling themselves witches at that point in time? We don't. Um, except, you know, from their writings, I'm not really so keen on, um, Samuel Gregory Mathers, so I can't really tell you, but I'm sure some other people will post on here. Moving right along, uh, another author that was really important, I believe, was Dion Fortune. Dion Fortune. Um... She wrote The Goat-Footed God. What she did is she wrote from a fictional standpoint. So a lot about witchcraft and magic was brought forth from a fictional standpoint. But most witches, hypothetically of that time, read her books knowing that, you know, she gave a lot of witchcraft information. You might think, well, that's a little far-fetched, don't you think? But no, I mean, that's what was being done. I mean, here in Casper, Wyoming, which is where I'm at right now, what happened was um, Anne For Forsling was a fictional author. She wrote about witches, and she had a lot of property up on Casper Mountain. Well, when she died, she gave her, um, her property, I guess, to the um, county, I think, and the county, in turn, has reenacted her stories ever since. We're talking about the early 1900s on that, too, people. 
And so that's what goes on here during midsummer is that they go up on the mountain, they reenact their stories about witches, and they have a big old bonfire, and a lot of the real witches actually go up on the mountain. So, um, yeah. Okay. But we were talking about Dion Fortune, so, so there are other authors who have done this in the past. If you want to mention a few, fine. That, that's fine. And we can't forget about Aleister Crowley, the Beast 666. Okay, because what he did is he just boldly and blatantly, as far as I understood, or understand it, he just boldly and blatantly um, put magic and witchcraft out in the forefront. Instead of suddenly, instead of writing from an anthropological standpoint or anthropological standpoint, and from a fictional standpoint, suddenly you have this guy who was raised in a very, you know, conservative family speaking up about witchcraft. And he kind of, he really put his neck out. Um, I think one, some of the information that I got on Aleister Crowley is he made a lot of his money suing publishing, or not publishing companies, but, um, uh, people who quoted him that did not have, you know, permission to do so. A lot of money that way, and then he kind of like, um, he started getting a little out of hand, as some people might uh, say. And there are rumors that he had wild orgies and this and that. And a drug cult, I think I heard, and so on and so forth. Anyhow, and if I'm wrong on that, then go ahead and correct me, okay? <laughs> then we're going to fast forward in time, because after that, it seemed like there was a bunch of authors. Like between, let's just say, 1920 and 1960. Can you bring up authors besides Gerald Garner between 1920 and 1960? Then, after that... Suddenly, we have more authors, even more so. Um, I noticed from collecting antique and vintage, you know, magic books and witchcraft books, that suddenly you go from most of the books pretty much in paperback, unless they were in a fictional format like um, Dion Fortune, or unless they were kind of fancy snancy like Charles Leland sometimes, you go from mostly paperback witchcraft books to suddenly paperback like a small fiction like a small fictional paperback novels you know the ones from like that was published like for example by Bantam Books for example I mean just a really small yeah kinda small rectangular book and then you also had those same books published in hardback form a really great example of this is Mastering Witchcraft by Paul Husen which was printed in 1970, I believe, and that, believe it or not, that's even before I was born. Okay. Um, and then you have authors like, for example, Freyder Malik that wrote about arcane magic or witchcraft, however you want to see it. There are some other authors, too. Can you name an author besides Gerald Gardner, besides Gerald Gardner, who wrote in the 70s? If so, list it down below and say the date.